Come on, guys, bite it. There he is, got him. First kokanee of the day on the jig. On Lake Shalane. Now you'll notice in most of my videos, I tend to troll fish for kokanee, um, and overwhelmingly prefer that. But jigging can be really effective on any body of water, including Shalane. So that was the second fish I dropped on for the morning, and I got a nice kokanee. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about jigging versus trolling for kokanee, and why I generally prefer to troll for kokanee. Boy, this guy got all three hooks in the mouth. It's almost always better to just bounce these kokanee into the boat if you're jigging, but in my boat, if they come in, they tend to bounce out, so. There we go, nice kokanee on the jig. So the first mark I dropped on, um, I didn't have any bait on the jig. Sometimes you don't need bait. Other times you do, and they came right in, looked at it, but then they left. I put bait on it, and the next fish I dropped on went for it. So in almost all my videos, you will notice that I overwhelmingly prefer to troll, and I prefer to troll for several reasons. One is it's a lot more forgiving <laughs> in terms of conditions in which you can actually fish in that manner. Uh, when jigging, you know, boat control is pretty critical. So there's two ways you can jig. There's active jigging, which is moving around and finding individual fish or schools of fish, and then targeting those fish specifically. And then there's passive jigging, which is basically anchoring up, either using spot lock or an anchor, in an area where you know kokanee are moving around and just sit in that spot and jig. And <laughs> I just hooked myself. There's a big school of kokanee below me right now, though. And with the passive jigging, you just kind of sit and wait for those fish to come to you. So, obviously jigging is a really good approach when fish are reluctant to hit on the troll. And that is more typically during early season, right after ice out. For some reason, when those water temperatures are really cold, uh, they won't respond to the troll as effectively as they will to the jig. Uh, you know, I got my start with jigging actually through the ice because obviously you cannot troll for kokanee when a lake is, there's one right there, when a lake is frozen over. So I apply those same tactics, nice fish, uh, when I'm out on open water too. Uh, but you can jig them year round, this is a nice fish. But early season and also around the spawn when they get in big, dense, aggressive schools is another good time to target them on the jig. Another beautiful fish. So here's a great example. I'm cruising around. I'm actively looking to jig on fish versus passively jigging. Whereas if I was trolling and I'm moving around and trying to find fish, um, you know, I'm still fishing while I'm looking for fish. Whereas with when you're jigging, you are really only fishing when you find and drop on fish specifically. And here's a fish mid column, just an individual fish. Let's see if we can get him to bite. No school associated with them. When you're targeting individual fish, you tend to have far less luck jigging than when there's multiple fish. It seems like when there's competition, you get that, that bite gets going a little more aggressively. Now you can see already I'm super, super heavily dependent on my electronics. and. Even though I'm very dependent upon my electronics when I'm trolling, I am extremely dependent on reading my electronics when jigging. And this is the thing about jigging is, you know, kokanee are constantly moving in search of food. And so, uh, you know, staying on top of them is really hard. Um, there's a lot of really effective kokanee jiggers out there that rely heavily on some pretty advanced electronics like live scope that allows them to look outwards in 100 feet in all directions and can chase those kokanee and stay on top of those schools of kokanee um, and that can really make or break a, a day on the water when you're targeting these fish on the jig 
I'm not seeing any jumpers today, but in the spring when the coco are feeding high on the surface, that's another great time to jig is we see fish jump, you can just cast the jumpers, and let it fall through the school. Oftentimes you'll pick them up uh, within the first few seconds after it hits the surface. Uh, because when you try and troll through those shallow fish, a lot of times they'll spook and break. You'll break up those shallow feeding schools. There's one. There's one. Just one on the bottom. We brought a buddy with him. There you go. There's one. Of course, the real advantage is here is I don't have to use a rod holder. I, I don't have to use a downrigger to get down to these fish way down at the bottom. Nice fish. And he's in the boat. See, if you have a power boat that's got a deep base in it, you don't have to worry about putting them in the net and getting those treble hooks on those things all tangled up. You can just bounce them into the boat. That's fish number three on the jig this morning, three for five. It's definitely much more of a video game jigging, I think. I think passive jigging, if you had an area in the lake that you knew there was a lot of fish hanging out and you could just anchor up and wait for them, probably be a little bit less interactive video game-like. I find that it's really more effective to just move around and target these fish, especially when they're scattered like this. This isn't what I would consider ideal jigging conditions where you have a few scattered fish here and there, small schools of, you know, one to three fish, and they're on the move, and I've got a fair bit of wind, so it's really hard to stay on top of these schools. Well, he's just a single fish, but... We'll see if we can... There we go. Got him. Well, that's so cool that you can just target an individual kokanee on the graph, though. I mean, can't really do that as effectively in trolling. Got him. That is crazy and effective. But I still prefer trolling for several reasons. So let's get this kokanee off the hook and then... Uh, switch up to trolling and I'll explain why. Compared to the simplicity of that uh, jigging approach which so pretty much all I was using there was just a medium light uh, seven foot rod and my electronics and do you have to have electronics to jig? No but it makes a pretty big uh, difference. Now you look at trolling I've got to have you know rod holders either snap weights or downriggers. There's a lot more going on in terms of equipment needs and complexity. But at the same time, I'm able to fish two rods and that makes it a lot more effective to target different depths, to try different techniques, different colors, different baits. And of course this downrigger I had right near the bottom and I had it down for just a minute or two and I already got a fish on. I haven't even got my second rod deployed. But that's kind of what I like about trolling more than anything is, is I'm always fishing even when I'm looking for fish. I can target multiple depths. I can use different types of colors and gear and really try and maximize my fishing potential. There we go. Another one in the boat, number five. This morning I'm just using Berkeley maggots. I like using the maggots, especially when jigging because they stay on so much better than corn does, even cured corn. Just seem to do a little bit better with jigging with those. Get this rod deployed here. I'm gonna use my shuttle hawk to help me deploy simultaneously. It's a little trick I kind of figured out this past few trips is that I can use the shuttle hawk to deploy the rod for me along with the clicker. So I clip into my shuttle hawk, which just dives up and down the downrigger line, open my bale, turn on the clicker, which offers just enough force to 
make that move, it'll start just to deploy on its own, just like that. And this one I'm going to run clip weight. Yeah. So again, this shows the advantage of trolling. Fish are spread out. I'm constantly fishing. I'm going to fish two rods at two different depths. As an individual angler, I can never target two depths at the same time when jigging. Obviously, if you have multiple people on your boat, you can. But with trolling, I can run two rods. I can get doubles. I can cover multiple depths. I can move around and search for fish and be fishing while searching for fish. And simply just cannot do that with jigging. Again, jigging has that simplicity. Um, and you can catch fish jigging and trolling on the same day as I've shown here. But to me, trolling really has a lot of advantages. Well, I haven't been bit in like 20 minutes. So it's time for a snack. It's another thing you cannot do while jigging. You cannot effectively jig and snack at the same time. Huge advantage to trolling. Oop. Finally there's a fish on the dropper. That's the challenge with uh, the dropper is you don't exactly have the same level of precision as you have with the jig or with the downrigger. There you know exactly how deep you're fishing. So if you don't have a downrigger, you're gonna be guessing a little bit more using lead weights to get down to where these fish are holding. They can still be very effective though. Here, Kokanee jumping back there behind me. Hopefully he stays on the hook. I clipped in about 30 feet above and then letting out 50 feet of line after I clip in. Nice coconut. There we go. There's one on the dropper in the kayak. I switched out to a smaller hoochie here, away from a bigger lure. It wasn't being productive for me. That was on a red micro hoochie with a glow head and a crinkle tape pink on a gold four and a half inch big eye dodger the teardrop shape Oops, another huge advantage i see to trolling or a, a tactic you could use to combine it with the jigging would be if you're fishing an unfamiliar lake and you're not really sure where the kokanee are holding you can always just go out and troll in the morning, catch that morning bite, figure out where fish are holding, and then come back uh, once you've identified areas where fish are concentrated and target those schools with the jig. And that's a good way to sort of combine those tactics. But trolling is definitely the best technique for lakes that you're unfamiliar with. Got them. Number seven in the box. It's a fatty. I think it's got some beef on it. Beefy. Oh, there's one. On the dropper. Even though I don't have the other rod deployed, I'm still gonna move forward, keep pressure on them. The, the fighting tactics are different too. Like, so when jigging, you don't have the boat moving to keep pressure. So I reel a lot more aggressively, a lot faster, and I'm using braid when I'm jigging. I'll put a link to a jigging video at the end of this video. It goes through over the gear and such. Okay, let's see if he's still there. Feels like he is. Gotcha. Nice. Always nice to get a couple in short order like that. That won't happen with jigging. You can't get those doubles or near doubles to happen on the jig when you're by yourself. Oop. One on the dropper. On that turn. 
The one thing that the dropper will do is it will hunt more than your downrigger rod will. Your downrigger rod is going to be hold at, holding at one depth. Whereas with this snap weight, that thing's going to be going up and down through the water column on your turns. And it, it will sometimes be the more productive rod. Sometimes less precision is a good thing. And that's that key with uh, trolling is just having those two rods that lets you fish a variety of depths at the same time. You're hunting all over the water column a little bit more than you would be with a single jig. That's number nine. Just need one more. I'm done. Although I'm going to be honest, today I think if the wind had just been a little bit lighter and I would have just stuck with the uh, jigging, I might have limited out faster. I feel like I had higher success, but it might have just been because it was in the morning. It's hard to test that, like straight up, like what's the best approach because I can't replicate time. There's fish. But I did want to do this comparison video just so I could show you that, you know, even on lakes where the troll bite is dominant, you can still absolutely come out here and jig. And I'm confident I could come out here, spend a couple hours uh, just jigging if the weather conditions were right and come away with a limit. All right, can we get number 10 in the boat? Let's see. It's always more painful to lose fish number 10. Unless you're wanting to spend more time out on the water, which, and I guess maybe losing number 10 is not so bad. Okay. Got him, and that's it for the day, folks. All right, I'll put links to all of the lures I used today and links to uh, my jigging tutorial too if you're interested in that at the end of this video it should be up here somewhere and i'll see you next time out on the water just remember fish smarter not harder bye guys